Hey family, this is Kathy. Welcome back to the Salt and Light channel. I have a word for you from the Lord, and the title of this message is Kingdom Partnership or Kingdom Connections. And it kind of goes in line with the video of <clears throat> All Hands on Deck, but the Lord wanted me to go into more depth of partnering with God. You, you are His child if you are a born-again Christian and you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you haven't, then we will give you a chance at the end of this video to pray for salvation and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. <clears throat> and then you become a partner with God or in covenant with Him through the blood of Christ. Matthew 6, 9-13 through 13 is what He gave me. Um, I'll actually start with verse 7. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the scripture. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That's not only people that owe you money, but it's people who have wronged you. Forgive them before they ask for it. That's being that's another kingdom connection or a way to act like Christ. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So um, I looked at the word hallow. You know, hallowed be thy name. Or hallowed, hallowed is your name. It means to render sacred, to consecrate. Uh, this word is from the Saxon and properly means to make holy. The name of God is holy, uh, reverenced as holy. We are his sheep and his children, but we can have kingdom connections and partner with God. You're already a child of God. You're already in the body of Christ. But there are things that God can use you in specifically that he's calling you to do. And there's ways you can do it. Um, how many of you watching this video have ever said, Lord, I just want to do more for you or I want to see more in my life. I'm, I'm hungry for more of you. How can I draw closer to you? Or Lord, I really need a breakthrough. How can I, how can I do this? Well, just through your prayers and seeking him is one of the first ways you can do it. But um, here's some examples. Moses, whom God met and spoke with and called a friend. You know, Moses led the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage where they'd been enslaved for 400 years. And he was a Hebrew, though he was raised as an Egyptian because his mother, you know, and sister put him in the basket to save his life. But he still did. After all those years, he heard the voice of God and he got up and he shucked off all of his royalty, his wealth to do what G what God had called him to do. And that he's a representation of Jesus Christ because Jesus left all of heaven to come to earth to save us and rescue us. And he even said, you know, I could call down a, th a legion of angels to deliver me from this being on the cross and they would have come, but he didn't. He chose to partner with God and fulfill his kingdom assignment. Another one is Noah. Noah was like the eighth preacher on the earth. He's the one that God started over with after he flooded the earth from all the, the sin and the debauchery of Sodom and Gomorrah. But the whole earth was just filthy, and God had to uh, wash it. And some say it's because the Nephilim were there, which were the offspring of, uh, I believe it was Genesis 4 or 6, when the angels came down and they saw the, they call them the daughters of men, basically human women, and they had sexual relationships with them, and they had offspring, which were the Nephilim, and they were destroying everything, and that's another reason why God flooded the earth, because that was not what an angel was supposed to be. They're supposed to be ministers for us, not trying to lay with people. So that, was again, was not God's plan. But God started over with Noah, and he told him to build the ark. And the, the only reason why that boat floated in the first place was because Noah was on it. And, of course, God told him to save his family and two of every kind of am, animal, insect, crawling thing, flying thing. 
and he did. His family was on the boat with him. But if you notice, God didn't really talk a whole lot about them. He talked about Noah. Of course, we did see what, you know, his sons did when he got drunk. And uh, I think it was Ham or Shem. We'll go into that in another video. You know, mocked him and his seed was cursed after that. But, um, and he also gave a call, a clarion call to all the people in that community. Hey, get on the boat. It's going to flood. God's going to destroy this place. And they laughed at him. But they weren't laughing whenever the rain started dropping and, the, and it got really bad and they were knocking on the ark and he couldn't let them back in because then it would have been like, you know, the movie Titanic, you know, flooding just masses of people trying to get on. And of course it was starting to flood the, the ship would, or the boat would have sank. God also tells everyone in his kingdom and he even warns the earth, the unbelievers. He tells his prophet what he's going to do before he does it. That's why when you start seeing the same word coming out from different prophets and different people, they're all preaching the same thing. Um, Amos 3, 7 through 8 says, God does nothing in the earth unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. His true prophets, their words will come to pass. And you just kind of know by the Spirit when they are of God. You, it, it should bear witness with you. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, the Holy Spirit will bear witness with you or it'll, it'll like connect with you. Oh, this is God. That's how I know when I get a word from the Lord or I hear something being preached. I know when that's the Lord speaking it to me because it just illuminates me and I get excited and I run with it. You know, he said the entrance of God's word gives light. So he, what he tells you should already bear witness through someone what he's already told you himself or you've had this like inkling or knowing of it uh, Matthew 7 9 no, no I'm sorry Matthew 9 37 through 38 he said to his disciples the harvest is great but the workers are few so pray to the Lord of the harvest who is in charge which is Jesus ask him to send more workers into his fields well, he's asking you to go into his fields and be a worker, just like I'm being a worker on this channel, and I do it outside of my channels as well. You know, start doing the the thing he's given you in your hands to do, and when you be faithful over that, he will make you ruler over much. And whatever he's called you to do, he will give you the joy and the excitement for it, but he will also bring the provision. So if you have a vision to build an international ministry, God may want you to just start with having Bible study at your house and then eventually it will grow from that that's how uh, me and my late husband started our church we just started it in our house I even started with a Bible study in South Florida after I got filled with the Holy Spirit and God told me I would be um, ministering to all tribes and nations internationally and I was I was just doing it in my, my living room and I would also do it at work you know just witness to people and now I'm on YouTube and Facebook and it's going international and all over the world just like the Lord prophesied to me so it takes steps and it takes season but more than anything it takes obedience and it takes um, you you believing uh, second Chronicles 2020 it says believe his prophets so will you prosper Whenever the Lord really has a work for you to do or he's called you, he will send a prophet to you. He will send an anointed man or woman of God that has a prophetic anointing or gift or apostolic or maybe they're just really in the word. But I believe they are anointed for the prophetic and the apostolic to confirm what he's called you to do. Just like he sent Samuel to anoint David to be king of Israel. And when God started do, moving in my life and I uh, rededicated my life to him at the age of 19 and received the baptism of the Holy Spirit he started sending people to me who were prophetic and one of them was my my mother and my mentors in the Lord and a lot of them are in heaven now except for one and they just came to me out of nowhere I didn't ask him to send them I was just so unaware of the things that he was doing in my life but I knew he was moving for me because things were becoming different and I knew he was there versus all the world I was seeing at one time. So God has sent me to you to tell you as a prophet of the Lord that he has called you and he's, he's saying it's time to step forward into your ministry or the business he's called you to start or maybe a children's home or maybe he wants you to build a 
you know, a, a soup kitchen and feed the homeless, whatever he's called you to do, or start a daycare, it, you know, just do it. And say, all you have to do is give God your yes and say, yes, Lord, I'll do it. Please send me the provision and the help and the people. You don't even have to say that. When you obey him, everything falls into place. That's how you partner with him. I gave God my yes a long time ago, and I asked him to use me any way he wanted because I saw him do so many things in my life, but I saw things at prayer meetings as a young person that he, I wanted to see him do through me, and I saw him do miracles for people and give prophetic words. And to me, that was the greatest gift was to be able to encourage someone and bring them to Christ or pray for them and see, you know, the demons come out of them and see them have peace of mind for a change. And that is the greatest gift. But you can also do it through different avenues, you know, through business, through, you know, food service, being, being a chauffeur, an escort. It does not matter. You can be a janitor and you can go walk them halls of that school or that hospital and pray over that place and bring the fire of God in that place. It doesn't matter your title. It's about are you in place on your assignment? Or like Habakkuk 2 or Habakkuk 2 says, I will stand on my watchtower and wait for the Lord until he speaks to me. Stay on your post. Get on your post if you're not on it. That's part of the reason why you're not getting a breakthrough is because you're not in place. You know, sometimes we can get weary or whiny and start blaming, you know, our boss or our spouse or, or the economy. But it all comes down to your obedience. When that happens, then everything's going to start opening up. Um... 2 Corinthians 6.14 Don't team up or be equally yoked with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? Now that is also used in context of marriage. So those of you that are waiting for your God-ordained husband or wife, keep waiting. Don't go run to the first person that presents a ring to you or promises you the moon, but you don't see the fruit and you see a lot of red flags. That could be a, it could be a counterfeit or the enemy's just trying to pull you into a trap. You know, God is telling me to tell you to wait for him. Don't settle for second best. And I'm seeing somebody, it was someone from your past that you dated in high school and he's come back into your life or she's come back into your life and you think, oh, the Lord is restoring what we once had. No, he's not. The Lord brought you out of that for a reason. Sometimes he does restore past relationships. But one thing he told me, he said, Kathy, whenever I brought the children of Israel through the Red Sea and they went through a lot of hell to get there, he said, I didn't part the Red Sea again for them to go back and get what they left behind or some, uh, you know, or go get, go get someone else. He said, I told them all to get ready and move forward. And that's what he's telling you now is to get ready and move forward. You know, sometimes the Lord doesn't want the past to come into your future. That's why he closed the Red Sea in front of them. So whoever that's for, you've been asking the Lord, oh, is this the one? No, the answer is no. There's someone in the future that's waiting for you, and it's going to shine like a diamond, and you're going to know when it's the one because you're going to feel it, and it's going to it's going to be more than what you could ever ask or think. So wait on the Lord, okay? He sees our hearts, and he knows what we're waiting on. Ways you can partner with God. First, through giving your life to Christ, becoming born again, and washed in the blood, and water baptized. Tithes and offerings. You give God 10% of what he blesses you with because it's already his it's holy it's separated and and you know giving is a way of worship that's why malachi 3 says you've robbed me and tithes and offerings well the tithe is what belongs to god and that's what brings the meat back into your house you know pays your power bill your rent groceries anything you give above that is what you purpose out of your heart that's your offering to him and that's where that's where I feel the overflow comes from. But he still blesses you for tithing. It it would be like if you borrowed somebody's car, and they um, when you borrowed it, they only had a quarter tank of gas. But when you brought it back, you filled it up and you had it detailed, or you took it through the car wash. That's like an offering. You didn't bring it back exactly the way it was. But even if you do, they're still going to be appreciative. That's like what we talked about the other night, the parable of the talents. 
you know, the person who hid their talent and didn't even do anything with it, God took it from them and gave it to the person who had 10. He said, come on, just do something with it. Step out in faith. Don't let fear hinder you. So when you give to God, you get heaven's economy in your life. And I would rather have heaven's economy over me and, and my 90% or my 80% being blessed than not giving it all. And then the devil has access to me because it's kind of like salvation when we try to do it in our good works. Jesus went to hell and paid the price for us. So why are we trying to pay the price for what he did for us? So do it the way the word says. And that's where your faith grows. You got to have faith to do it. So even if you don't fully understand it, just step out in faith and start tithing. Start giving offerings above your tithe. I don't care if it's a quarter. I don't care if it's a dollar. God sees your faith stretching and you're partnering higher. You're going up to him, whether you think you are or you aren't. And then you're going to start seeing a little breakthrough, more breakthroughs. Like, oh my God, I got a letter and this bill was canceled or paid off or they gave me loan forgiveness. Or all of a sudden you're not sick anymore and you're feeling great. Or you get a letter in the mail and, and uh, we're going to approve you for a car loan. Bring this voucher up and we'll give you a thousand down and uh, no credit check. And you've been praying for a car. It's it's things like that, how he does it. Or someone calls you and asks you out for lunch. My treat. I just feel to bless you. Um, so that's what he's telling me. He said, stop struggling in your own strength and do it his way. And when he says, don't be unequally yoked, just think of a yoke of like two horses tied together or an oxen. Well, it was really the ox. And they, you know, they plowed the field and it was over their neck. Well, the Lord's yoke is easy and his burden is light. And he doesn't call us servants. He calls us friends. But we still should do what he, he asks us to do because that's the kingdom way or your kingdom connection. Uh, fasting, praying, worshiping, serving him, serving people. He said, step outside of your comfort zone and let God use you. Be obedient to his word, his voice, his prophets, and his servants. And that's, again, Second Chronicles 20, 20. Believe his prophets, and so will you prosper. If you partner with God and you become, uh, have this kingdom connection and you become kingdom financiers, when you give to the ministry, you are financing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he takes it from you, and he runs with it, and he gets more souls saved. I can't tell you how many people have become born again through this channel through your obedience, through um, your sewing and sharing these videos. So thank you so much. And I'm going after those threes, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So if you're watching this right now and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life or you're not sure if you have or you want to recommit your life to Christ, simply pray this prayer after me. And it's Romans 10, 9 through 13. I'm going to read the first couple that if you... Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. Not might be, you will be. For with the heart man believes to righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So all you have to do is believe and confess. So just close your eyes and repeat this, this prayer after me to Jesus, not to me. Say, Lord Jesus... Forgive me of my sins. I repent. I believe in my heart you are the Son of God. And I confess with my mouth, Jesus, that you are Lord. You died on the cross for my sins. And God raised you from the dead for my justification. Lord Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit and baptize me in your holy fire. I give you my will and heart in exchange for yours. I am saved. Thank you, Jesus. It's that simple. Now all of heaven is rejoicing. The angels are throwing a party. They're calling your name right now. That's in Luke. Read uh, Luke 15. And I like uh, verses 7 through 10. Luke 15, 7 through 10. It says where the angels rejoice over one righteous, over one sinner who repents. And your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. <clears throat> excuse me your next step is to be water baptized and because Jesus was baptized and it's a sign of going down in the water as the old man or the old woman and coming up a new creation in Christ and the water is anointed 
and deliverance is there. And we just had one of our members just get uh, baptized the other night, uh, a few hours before our lives. So God bless you, Chloe. And I pray the Lord leads you to an opportunity to get water baptized. And once you do, let us know and, and go ahead and take that opportunity. Even if it, you see a mass baptism going on at the beach or you're riding by a lake and you see people getting baptized, go on down. You're running to meet Jesus is what you're running to do. And the people are the vessels he's using or the partners he's using. Um, I want to thank all of you for your giving to this ministry. I want to thank thank Alice for her Venmo seed, her ties. I want to thank um, Miss Miller and for your cash app offering. Thank you so much, Melissa. Thank you. And to all of you that have given through the Super Thanks, Super Chat, uh, cash at Venmo, God bless you. I take your seed and your offerings to the Lord, and I ask him to bless you and multiply it and give you the desires of your heart, but also to equip you and bring you into the fullness of what he has for you and to heal you and your family and bring your family to Christ. Um, I do have a song that goes with this video and I'm gonna give you the name of it and put it in the description. But also I wanna give a shout out to the Salt and Light membership, uh, monthly seed members who have agreed to sow monthly seed and, and it starts at 99 cents. That's a good way to increase your faith. Um, you can always cancel at any time, but also to our awesome, all of you subscribers, you are a part of the foundation of this family. So welcome to our new and our returning subscribers, to those who pray for me, pray for this channel. You like, subscribe, share, you leave engaging comments. You know, YouTube looks at all of that. So if you want to subscribe, hit the bell icon on the right side and please hit the little thumbs up on the left side to get these messages into the YouTube algorithm. And when people comment on these videos i see them every day i pray for you i try to answer you back but also god sees it and the people that are watching these videos see your comments and your encouragement so you are doing the work of an evangelist just know that um the name of the song and it's one of my absolute favorite groups i used to listen to uh when in the 80s and the 90s it's by a group called for him and the song is a man you would write about and you if you're a woman you could think a woman you would write about but he talks about a person that he wants to be a man that would be written about who god used who obeyed and said heard his voice and said yes and they have another one called wrecking ball that i love that lord i'll ride your wrecking ball i'll tear these walls down so i'm going to put both of those uh in the description and you can listen to them on your own time and listen to the lyric version so you can follow with the words. So I pray the Lord will bless you and go before you and behind you and meet all of your needs and keep you and your family safe. So I love you all and I'll see you in the next video.